So we're looking at a topic that uh, many times I've been asked either in my private mentorship or people in Twitter or people in the comment section of my videos when I open up the comment section. They'll ask me, you know, what's my routine? And I've shared my routine on Twitter. I, I said pretty much what I do, what I eat, how I eat, my meal plans and what I do throughout the day. Uh, that has been thrown into disarray with this whole house move here. Uh, there's been things that have challenged that schedule, so I've had to augment and change things. So the the routine in the morning, I think really what everyone's asking, because they really didn't care about you know the calories and the meals I eat and how I exercise and what stretching routines I do and all those types of things. That's That's the boring thing. Nobody's interested in that. But I did share it. It's on Twitter. But... I think what they're asking for is what's my trading morning routine? Like, what do I do in the morning? Like when I'm, before I sit down in the charts, like what is going through my mind? What do I consider? What are things that are important to me as an analyst? What do I look for as a, a supportive structure, um, a resource? What resources do I use? Those types of things. And I, I kind of like want to talk a little bit about that today. But when I wake up, if I'm napping in the afternoon, because I do generally try to take a nap in the afternoon before the PM session in S&P, I will, again, hydrate. But if I'm waking up for the morning session, the first thing I do is hydrate. I drink 20 ounces of spring water. And then that's important because you have to have, number one, you have to have liquid. You have to have it. Uh, your brain will function better. Your muscles will be hydrated. You'll get less muscle cramps. And generally, I have a half a banana, and that'll give me potassium because standing in one spot and or if you sit, uh, I don't like to sit because my back won't let me do it. But if you do that for a long period of time, you'll get crampy. And I'm not sure if you ever stood or sat in front of the charts for a long period of time and you start getting that crampiness in your lower back or somewhere in your body, or you get a muscle cramp somewhere, you can't focus on the chart. You're worried about that damn cramp that's going off. So one of the best things you can do is start your day with hydration. And then I stretch. I go through a routine of stretching. And that's about all I'm going to do for this discussion here, because everything else is obviously shown in that tweet uh, months ago. But what I do is I refer to the economic calendar again, because when you wake up from a nap or if you slept overnight and you're getting ready to do your morning session and trading, it's very easy to lose your bearings. You ever wake up and I'm 50 years old and I've had episodes in the last 30 years where I woke up and literally felt like I was late for school. <laughs> I haven't been in school for a long, long time, but it's just weird how our minds are so powerful when we're sleeping. And when you wake up, you are in a altered state. Like you're not really awake yet. Your eyes might be open someone may be talking to you and you're looking in the direction that they're talking, but you're not really there. So you have to obviously refer back to what it is that you're going to be doing because you could remember something about an economic calendar event. And I've done this. Okay. So I thought that there was going to be a report due and it wasn't due and I'm expecting something in the marketplace and then realize, Oh, what am I doing? I'm in the marketplace trying to do something and that's not even due out today. Or if I'm waiting for an 830 morning news embargo to lift and there's no news coming out. So I have to make the decision. Do I hold on to this trade idea? If it's in drawdown and try to get out with close to even or if I can squeak out a, a win from it or do I just cut bait and just take the small loss because I did something incorrect? These are all things I have done coming up. OK, so. If you've ever had that happen, just know that you're in good company because I'm not ashamed, ashamed to say that I did those things too coming up. So you have to definitely review the economic calendar. Now, what economic calendar do I use? Well, I used to use Econo Day. Now, I mentioned that when I was on Baby Pips. And when I went to teaching predominantly Forex, I grew to appreciate and like ForexFactory.com's calendar. I think it's easy. It's easy to manage and filter I don't like looking at the yellow low impact events. Um, I only looked at the pairs that were of interest to me, but always the dollar. And 
when I was trading Forex, it would be the euro dollar, the pound dollar, and the US dollar. And only medium impact and high impact news drivers. And I would toggle the little gray box because it would tell you bank holidays and things like that. But other than that, that's pretty much what I would use for an economic calendar. The review of what I thought would come the previous day. So in other words, whatever I thought my analysis would see in price delivery, for instance, what did I think was going to happen in euro dollar? Okay. Or what did I expect to see in e-mini S&P before I laid down? Okay. I have to revisit that because while I was sleeping, you know, bombs could be dropping somewhere, you know, a new virus gets released, <laughs> some kind of boogeyman, you know, narrative gets put in motion, um, or just simply, you know, a collapse of some kind or something that I didn't expect and I was wrong in my analysis. The market has done something I didn't expect and I was wrong. So I have to recalibrate myself and say, okay, what did I expect before I took the nap or before I went to bed? And then when I go into the economic calendar, I have that reminded because if I expect something to come into the marketplace in terms of volatility, that's what the high impact and medium impact news drivers are for. We want to know when it's likely to increase in volatility. Okay. It's one thing to be like in an earning season, like in earning season, you know, futures, they get wild many times after the, the close. Okay. And we also know that in Forex, we don't really have earnings season, but we do have economic drivers that come out and they're set to a specific day and time, much like a TV guide. Okay. I'm a, I'm a child of the seventies. I was born in 1972. And when we grew up, all you young guys and gals out there are used to having the TV guide or the, the guide on your remote. You push your button and it tells you what's on TV right now and what channel, and you can scroll ahead in time and see what what's on. We only had that luxury with a little magazine. And it was a TV guide and it was published every week. Well, these, these, these events or topic or not topics, but these events and or opportunities in trading are basically scheduled like, like TV programs. Okay. Your high impact and medium impact news drivers are scheduled well in advance. Like you can see two, three weeks from now when these things are coming. So you're not surprised by, it, or you shouldn't be. Okay. So by having that understood and what days of the week are likely to create these increases in volatility so you know what that volatility is going to bring with it the strong likelihood of manipulation and that's one of the key factors or ingredients to what we're looking for for smart money we want to see some type of manipulation and i'll get to what that manipulation should look like in a moment but i'm referring to the economic calendar make sure I'm making sure rather that i'm in front of the charts for the right reasons and I'm following the right market. So if you're a Forex trader, uh, you want to be looking for your pairs that have the currency news driver that has a higher in, high or medium impact news driver coming out around it. It'll tell you the time. And most of the time it's 8.30 in the morning or if it's US based, it may be something like 9.30 or 10 or 10.30 like for crude oil inventories. And you can trade Canadian dollar, you know, just on that report alone. But referring to your previous session or before you went to sleep's analysis, is that still hold true or does it hold true or has something changed while you were away from the charts? 